Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video we're going to go over section 3.1b describing hairpinning, split tunneling, always on and not traversal and we have a really good um, PowerPoint, really short PowerPoint but it has a lot of stuff, um, a lot of good stuff so let's go ahead and start with this PowerPoint so we're going to start with describing what hairpinning is and Hair pinning is basically when we need access to the company and the internet at the same time. Um, this is when we use um, Cisco AnyConnect to connect from a remote location. So if we connect to like a public network and then we want to connect to the VPN, uh, we will have to use Cisco AnyConnect so we can build this tunnel as you can see over here. And it establishes a VPN connection to the firewall. So you can see from Cisco and connect all the way to the firewall right here. And the firewall connects you to the internet. As you can see right here, the tunnel has been built. So what it does is it goes to the um, to the firewall and it builds that VPN tunnel. And then what it does is it lets you out of the internet. So you basically have access to the LAN to the corporate LAN and DMZ, but you also have access to the internet. And the way it does, the way it happens is that to go to the internet, the firewall sends you back out the same way it came in. And you know that Cisco does not like this because this causes a split horizon. Um, because it is going in and now the same interface will learn the route. And due to the split horizon, um, Cisco does not like this at all. It can be configured. Um, a lot of people do configure it this way, but it is not as popular as you think. So hairpinning is whenever you have to, you actually use the VPN tunnel to connect to the internet and also to get to the corporate LAN, right? Or private LAN. So you have access to the private LAN and also you have access to the internet but what it does is when you want to access the internet, it sends you out the same way you came in. And this could cause split horizon, which could cause um, problems with a Cisco firewall because it does not like configuring hair, hair pinning due to a split horizon. Okay. And now let's go ahead and move on. And also um, hair pinning can be um, configured with remote access VPN and also with site to site VPN okay just letting you know because and, and if you do not know the difference between the remote access VPN is that you use you actually use Cisco AnyConnect and site to site VPN you use two firewalls right okay so now let's go ahead and describe split tunneling and how split tunneling works split tunnel VPN so here's what a split tunnel is the VPN tunnel only connects you to the company resources using the Cisco AnyConnect and split tunneling could be configured either with remote access like we have over here we have a remote access vpn tunnel or site to site vpn which is firewall to firewall right in us and the only data used for the tunnel is for the data intended for the dmc or the local infrastructure as you can see right here when we go to the internet we use the router and, and not the vpn so what happens is we access the resources through the vpn tunnel so we access the corporate resources to the tunnel and whenever we go out to the public network we use um, the router or this is basically like an AP right here that has been configured so we use so we go out to the company data and resources to the VPN tunnel and to the internet we do not use the tunnel we just go out straight out to the AP and the router wherever you are located and as you can see right here, the only data used for the tunnel is for the data intended for DMC or the local infrastructure. When we go to the internet, we use the router and not the VPN. Some say that an attacker can gain access to the host and then use that host to gain access to the VPN and attack the company. So a lot of people says that this is not a really good implementation. And other people say that it is a good implementation and there is not really a security risk to this. I mean, but if you're using Cisco AnyConnect and if you have to 
if two-factor authentication is set up um, for that, then there's no, not really a risk there. And also, got to give a shout out to IT Pro TV for providing me, not providing me, I just snipped those um, those pictures that you see, um, and it was these pictures or these topologies were created by um, I forgot his name um, by Ronnie. Ronnie's the one. Um, I'm taking the CCNA security course there. If you want to go ahead and take it, um, you can use promo code CCNA DT. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. So we have learned about her, her hair pinning. As you can see, hair pinning uses the tunnel to access the internet. Right, and it goes out the same way it came in. And split tunneling does not use a tunnel. What it does is it just goes out on the public network. And but to access the company resources, it does uses the VPN tunnel. And now describe always on VPN, right? Always on. It is always on. So always on is when two firewalls connected are connected at all times. It does not use it's going to connect because it needs to be automatically form and not manually form because when you manually form one it's when you use the Cisco and it connect. If the devices are on, a VPN tunnel is created. The VPN is always on for the devices. It is a persistent VPN connection. That's what it is. So always on it is a persistent VPN connection. This is for really high secure um, securely that if you need it in your company. And it's for companies that have multiple sites and all the sites need to be sending and sharing data at all times like in my company we have a location in Kenneth Square and then we have another location in West Grove and we always have a VPN on when we're sharing between those two sites so we have an always on VPN connection and it is also it is a side-to-side -side VPN uh, we relied on the on that connection to be on at all times because if it's not on we won't be able to um, connect between the two sites, right? So always on VPN, it is a persistent VPN connection. And now we're going to describe NAT traversal. And as you can see right here, um, NAT changes the IP address when the data is going in or out of the network, right? Um, and NAT traversal can be configured either with remote VPN or site-to-site -side VPN. And since NAT changes the IP address, the AH header won't match on the other side. So whenever you receive that packet, um, NAT is going to change that packet. And if it does not match it on the other side, if the AH does not match it on the other side, then it is going to get discarded. As you can see right here, uh, when we do the AH header IP, so we encrypt this, and then we send it via NAT. So NAT is going to change that header, and then it's not going to match the hashing algorithm that we run. And then it's going to get discarded. Okay, so we're going to remove. They're going to remove that whenever they get that. Um, whenever they get that uh, data, and this could cause. So if you have problems with, if you are um, setting up a, a, a VPN connection between two sites and you have problems with it, it is probably because of the NAT, because NAT is um, is configured on that router. So. Uh, which is why NAT traversal was designed for. So NAT traversal was designed for this problem. So what NAT traversal does that uh, it takes an ESP encrypted packet and it adds a fake NAT header. So this is what it does right here. Uh, when it's when the e it is encrypted with ESP packet, what it does is you, you just add a fake NAT header um, right here at, at, at the beginning. And then it does not change the ESP packet or AH header. So whenever we get over here, it's gonna whenever the destination receives the packet, it's going to say, "Oh, this is a, f a fake NAT header, right?" And then it's going to take the ESP encrypted packet and it's going to run that HMAC plus MD5, and then it's going to match the AH header algorithm for the AH header IP packet, I IP packet and payload packet or IP header and data payload header and then it's going to allow that um, data to come in because um, we are not just running NAT, we are running NAT, NAT transversal. So whenever you ha are going to configure VPN and NAT, make sure that you configure NAT tra traversal and not just regular NAT because otherwise the VPN connection is not going to work. Okay, so 
and you can for natural reversal you can use either remote VPN or side to side VPN either one of those um, two should work and this is it for this video guys I hope you guys enjoy this video and on the next video what we are going to be doing is we are going to start configuring so we are going to implement basic client clientless SSL VPN using ASDN and I'm going to use IT Pro TV practice lab practice practice labs and it's going to use the lab that is called implement SSL VPN using ASA device manager introduction so this is the one that we are going to do and if you do not have a IT Pro TV account you can sign up and get a seven day free trial and also if you want 30% off of course you do want 30% off you can use promo code CCNADT again CCNA D for dog and T for taco so on the next video go ahead and sign up for your seven day free trial and get that 30% off with my coupon and then go ahead and follow me on twitter at CCNA daily tips and if you don't have a twitter account go ahead and create one and then follow me guys so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one guys bye bye